finish up, but we won't say everything there is to say, but we're going to finish up and have a new set of lessons next week. So, I was thinking about, or I've been thinking about the word joy. What's another word that we would use, that we might use today uh, if we're talking about joy? Aurora? Happy. Happy. Okay. Did anybody think of a different word between besides joy or happy? Moses? Praise God. Praise. Okay. Praise. Kind of. It's close. It's not the same. Happy is not the same either. But I want us to think about three, four, five people that we've been ta that we talked about in our lessons. Okay, three, four, or five. Let's see how smart we are. Can anyone tell me one of the five people that we talked about the last three weeks? You might not know their name. You might know their name. Might not know their name. Tell me one of the five people we talked about the last three weeks. Aurora. The kid? What, what, what about the kid? Because there's a couple kids. The king. Did we talk about, we haven't, we didn't talk about a king the last three weeks. The, the what? Okay, what else about, what about the rich man? What do we know about him? Oh, king. He was a ruler, wasn't he? The rich, young ruler. Yes, okay. So that's one. I was, my brain was on a different wavelength, but that was right. The rich, young ruler. Who was, so that's one. We got four more that we could talk about from the last three. Xander and Deegan. You guys need, one of you needs to sit by Mr. Mr. Isaac. Because Moses, scoot over Moses, what's one of the what's one of the other men, uh, people that we talked about? Zacchaeus. How many remember us talking about Zacchaeus? What did Zacchaeus do? Several things, but what did he do? What does the what do these pictures remind us that he did? He climbed up in a sycamore tree. That's right. So Zacchaeus. And the rich young ruler. And then last week we talked about three people in last week's lesson. Does anybody remember? Let's see if I, I have, here's a picture with all three of them. From last week's lesson. A lot of people that were not here last week are here this week. Moses, tell us one of them. The younger boy. The younger, the young boy. And then. And, okay, okay, and who else? The dad. The dad, very good. So there's a younger brother, a dad, and who would this be? If there's a younger brother, who's this? The older brother. Okay, so, now we've talked about five people. Who can tell me which ones ended up being happy? Which ones ended up with joy? Which ones ended up with joy? Aurora, one of them that ended up with joy. The little brother. He didn't have joy all the time, did he? No. He was upset because he thought he could have more fun if he had all of his money from his dad. So he asked his dad for it. Moses, put your hand down. I'll ask for a question. Wait till I ask the question again. But then, so his dad gave him all the stuff, and he went in a far country, and he had lots and lots of fun. But then, it all and all his money went away, and then he was not happy, was he? When he was, um, he's not happy here, is he? But right here, he changed his mind, didn't he? He changed his mind. He changed his heart. And he changed what he was going to do. He went back. He turned from where he was and went back to his father. And then he was, he might have been scared, right? But when he finally got to his dad, he wasn't scared. He had joy. 
right? So that was so that was one of them that had joy. Somebody else. What, so we have four more. Somebody else that ended up with joy. Moses. Zacchaeus. Yeah. Zacchaeus started out. He thought he was okay. But then when he got to be around Jesus, he realized that he was a thief, right? He had taken more money from people than he was supposed to. But he turned from his way. He decided stealing from people is wrong. From now on, I'm going to give half of what I have. He was a rich person. Half of what I have to the poor and people that I've stolen from, I'm going to repay them four times as much. And he ended up happy. Now, the, the verses don't necessarily say that, but I know he was happy because when you have turned to Jesus and you're obeying Jesus, you're happy. Yep. Okay, so we have Zacchaeus ended up happy. The, the young man, the young brother, where is he in our three pictures? The young brother, he ended up happy. Was anybody, did anyone else of those five end up happy? Aurora? The dad comes to celebrate that? Yes. So the dad, everything was okay with dad, and then his son came and said, give me what's mine. And that had to break his heart, but he still did it anyway. And then his son, the younger brother, took everything, sold the land, took the money, and went a long way away. Do you think that made the father happy? No. What did the father do while the son was away? He was watching for him, wasn't he? And as soon as he saw his son, even though his son didn't look like the nice, sharp young man that, that he was when he left, the father was happy. In fact, that's the whole reason Jesus told that story. Because our verse says, what? Joy shall be in, uh, in that likewise, joy shall be in heaven, and who lives in heaven? God over one sinner that repented more than over 99 just persons which need no repentance. Okay, so those three ended up happy. Did anyone else, any of, any of the other five, end up happy? Xander? All right, yes, the younger, we said that. The younger brother, he ended up happy. The father ended up happy. Zacchaeus, he ended up happy. Did anyone else end up happy? This is just a yes or no question. Did anybody else end up happy? Yes? How many say yes? Somebody else ended up happy out of the five. Okay? How many say no? No one else out of the five were happy. Okay, we got hands all over the place. So, there was the rich young ruler. Jesus told him, he thought he was okay, except he knew there was something missing. And he came to Jesus and said, Good master, what should I do in order to have eternal life? Because he thought if he had eternal life, then he would be happy. And Jesus told him to do something, right? And when he asked, when he told him what to do, the man realized that he loved his money, right? He loved his money more than he loved Jesus. And who's Jesus? Jesus is God. So we should love Jesus more than anything else. But this man, he loved his money more than he loved Jesus. And the Bible says, he went away. Does he look joyful here? No. He went away sorrowful. He went away sorrowful. Alright. And then there's one last person. There is the older brother. Now, he stayed home, right? He was the good boy. He kept telling himself that, right? But when his brother came home and everybody else was happy, what about him? Where's my pictures? He was. He was mad. He wasn't joyful, was he? Now, his father was joyful, but he wasn't joyful. That's not a good thing, is it? Yeah, but he he already had all the good stuff. He should have been happy just like everybody else. But he was not happy when good things happened. He did not end up happy. So, 
We have in this lesson, in these all these lessons, we have four people who were going one way and either decided to go the other way or didn't decide, right? So if everybody in life is, let's say, get my picture here that's showing this. So I guess for this picture we're going to go. Everybody in life is going, but in my lessons, this is the, always the wrong way, isn't it? When I tell the lessons, this. So everybody in life is going this way. The rich young ruler, he was going this way. Zacchaeus, he was going this way. The young brother, he was going this way. The older brother, he was going this way. But when Zacchaeus came to Jesus, he came, he went to Jesus, what happened? He thought about his life, he changed his mind, God changed, he changed his mind, his heart, his, his choices, his will, and he left, started going this way, right? He was going this way, he, he thought about his ways, and he changed his ways, and then he's going this way. The rich young ruler... He was going this way, and he went to Jesus, said, what should I do? Jesus said, do this. And what did he do? He kept on going this way. Did he, did he repent? Did he turn from his ways? No, at least not in the Bible. Maybe sometime later on, because as long as you're alive, you can turn to Jesus. So maybe a long time later, he, got, he, he decided to come to Jesus, but we, the Bible doesn't tell us that. Right there, he had a choice, and he did not repent. The young man, the young brother, he's going his way, he got all the stuff, he had his fun, he was partying, all of that stuff. Things went bad in his life, and he came to himself, and he thought, and he changed his mind, didn't he? At, when he was young, he didn't want to be around dad. He didn't want to work there, he wanted to do his own thing. But... Then he changed his mind and came back and said, Dad, I'll, I'll just even be a servant. Right? He did want to be there. So he, it, he changed. His mind changed. His thoughts changed. His heart changed. His choices changed. The, the older brother, he's just going this way. And while he's going this way, he thinks he's good enough. Right? But he wasn't good enough, was he? He never changed his ways, did he? He never turned, he, he, because if he repented, what would there be? There'd be joy, right? Once you repent, there's joy. Now sometimes you, sorrow, sadness, bad things happen to us. Bad things happen to the young man, right? He, had to, he was hungry. But when he got there, when he turned back, then there was joy. But the older brother, he just kept going his way. And he never had any joy. So, repentance. The Bible says that God wants every single person in the world to repent. How about that? God wants every single person in the world to repent. So what does that mean? That means God wants every single person in the world to go to heaven. Right? He wants every single person in the world to be saved. But God is holy and He is just and He will not just let every single person in the world go to heaven. What does every single person, in order to get to heaven, in order to be saved, what do they have to do? According to the, what we are learning right now, what do they have to do? Aurora? Which is our big word that's, that's what? <coughs> Repent. Right. So, in order, to go, in order to go to heaven, in order to be saved, you have to repent. You have to believe on God. There's a lot of things that happen when we get saved. It's not like we check the list off that we've done all these things. But we have faith, right? We believe. We, um, we turn from our sin. We recognize that Jesus is God. We repent. All of these things are all part of kind of one action, or not even an action, one process. In our heart, in our mind, in our thoughts, we say, ah, 
I don't, I don't want to keep going my way. Because going my way ends up in hell. I'm going to turn. I'm going to believe on Jesus. Jesus is the Son of God. That means He's God. He's the Creator. He's the boss. And I want to, I want to live for Him. I know I, I might not, but I want to. And because He died on the cross to forgive my sins, I'm turning from my way, and I'm going to believe on Jesus. I'm repenting. I'm putting my faith in Jesus. So all that believe, faith, repentance is all the same thing when we're saved. And when that happens, even if it's a quiet spot in your room and no one else knows, when you make that decision, you know where there is joy. You know where they're clapping and joyful and <coughs> singing. When even one person, even if it's just you, turns the Bible says, there is joy shall be in heaven over one sinner. And that, I think, teaches us that there is joy in heaven over every single one sinner that repents, that turns from their way and believes on him. So, we talk about important, serious subjects here at Bible Club, because the Bible is not a comic book. It's not a joke book. It's serious stuff. And sometimes you might not understand it. But when you do understand it, or if you think you understand it, and you, and you, want, and you want to talk about it some more, you can talk to me, or Mr. Isaac, or Miss Megan, or Mrs. Oglin, and say, I think I want to be saved, or I think I'm, I don't know if I'm saved. You can talk to any of us who are here when you get here. And we could tell you some more from the Bible, not just from the lessons. We could look at the Bible and see what the Bible says. And then, as soon as you recognize that you're going the wrong way and you need to believe on Jesus, you already know about Jesus, but you need to put your faith in Him, you need to do that. And it doesn't have to be at Bible Club. It doesn't have to be at church. It can be in your room at home. It could be on the bus, on the way to school. Anywhere, anywhere you are. You could be sitting in the park. You could be mowing the grass. You could be doing anything. Wherever you are, as soon as you know that you should turn to, to Jesus and believe on Him and be saved, you should do that. How do you do that? It's something that happens in our mind, in our heart, and in our choices. Uh, the word that we would use is in our will, but in our choices. From now on, I want to please God. Um, I don't want to keep going the wrong way. That's our will. So, hopefully you understand a little bit more about repentance, we're going to keep telling more lessons next week from, from the time that Jesus was on the earth and learn some more about what the Bible says. And almost always our lessons that have Jesus in them are going to be lessons that teach us how we can be saved or something about being saved. Alright. So whoever has the story today does not get rescued by the long-winded